Welcome to today's video, where we'll be talking about this guy. Oh my god! What the f*** is going on? I can't even see! I might as well be f***ing blind. Actually, what the f***? If that looks even remotely familiar to you, that's because it's a recreation of how I, and I can only imagine, a lot of other people felt when they got to the Lord Elias boss fight. This is where the game really starts to ramp up its difficulty, and because of that, I think that a lot of people are liable to get stuck here, and that's why this video exists. I'm gonna give you some tips and some tricks when it comes to defeating Lord Elias that I think will help basically any player either trying to defeat this boss in order to get the drops, or if you're stuck on it and you're just trying to move on with the storyline. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first and most important thing to note about Elias is that every single move that he has, you can parry. The spear attack, parryable. The AoE on the spear attack, parryable. Arrows, you can parry that. Normal M1s, yep. Charge attack, yep. Awakening charge attack with the lightning bolt. Both of them, no problem. Every single attack can be parried. That being said, not every attack should be parried because it can put you at a detriment sometimes. For those who may not know how to parry, you press G, which is to block, right before an attack hits you. Realistically speaking though, there are only one or two attacks that you wanna parry. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about all of the things that Elias is able to do, that way you know exactly what you're going up against. Elias has two ranged moves. One where he throws a spear that will deal damage if it hits you or hits near you, and one that fires arrows into the air that will come down on your location. He also has two melee moves, one that's a normal kind of M1 attack, and one that's a dash attack, where he hits the ground once with a big AoE hit, jumps up in the air, and then does it again. When Elias awakens, there's really only a few big changes to his direct moveset. After the first hit of the dash attack, he'll jump up into the air and fire a lightning bolt at you that can be very difficult to deal with. And his healing move, which I neglected to mention where he pops a potion and heals himself, is directly replaced with a move where he hits himself with lightning multiple times, however it heals the same. Both the range moves do see an upgrade, with the spear attack moving faster and hitting a larger area, and the arrows hitting more often as well as having a larger area. So those are all the moves, but I haven't really answered the question yet. How do I beat him? Let's start with the first phase. The first phase, generally speaking, should be mostly a cakewalk. Elias is very easy to keep track of in this first part, because while he's always dashing around the arena, it's pretty slow and generally pretty easy to track. I think these dashes is, however, an area where a lot of people take unnecessary damage, myself included. The thing to note about his dashes is that Elias is always going to dash once or twice and no more than that before using an attack. A big mistake that I've seen people make is that they see him dash once, try to attack, then he dashes again, they're not ready, they don't have their bearings, and then he hits them with an attack. That or they're just not ready to punish it because they just tried to attack him on the pillar and missed, and now the screen effects are all over the place and you can't see. Generally speaking, if you can wait until he dashes the second time, you can hit him when he hits that second pillar because you know he's not gonna dash again. Now when it comes to using his attacks and how do you punish the attacks, the arrows are hands down the easiest, so that's where we'll start. In his base form, if you see him pull out the bow and arrow, dash in a direction, cancel the dash with an attack, and shoot him. It really is that simple. Make sure you jump while you're dashing so you get a little bit of height. Now when it comes to the spear, it's a bit more complicated. Because Elias has two types of spear attacks, one where he throws it immediately and one where he jumps up and throws it, you have to be a bit careful. If Elias just throws the spear straight at you, dodge it, and then wait. Be ready to dodge another attack because a lot of the time he'll charge at you or do something that just isn't standing there and getting hit by your attacks. If he does the jump, however, that's where you can get some hits in. Get some distance, wait for him to throw the spear, dodge out of the way, and then charge an attack, and shoot at the top of the pillar where he's going to land. During the first phase, after he throws his spear, he's going to fall down to the bottom of the pillar. So if you try to shoot straight at him, you're just gonna miss. Now as for the M1s and the charge attack, those you should just outright avoid whenever possible. The punish window is really small on the both of them and it's just not worth going for any hits here because you're probably just gonna take damage. Now moving into the second phase is where things get difficult. And it's also where a little bit of our cheese comes in. 
The easiest way to try to cheese this fight is while he's transitioning and doing his little voice line for the second phase, you jump up onto the side of the arena. While you're up here, Elias is only going to throw spears and shoot arrows. Both attacks that at this range should be relatively easy to avoid. And because in his second phase, when Elias jumps up and throws his spear, he stays in the air, unlike the first phase where he falls down, you can just fire directly at him. So anytime you see him about to throw a spear, you can use your high jump, jump into the air, strafe a little bit, and then once you see him throw it, immediately charge a spell and fire it at him. When it comes to the bow and arrows, your best bet is to see him start charging it and pick a direction, either left or right, move that way, then jump and use your spell. Now, if you don't want to use the wall as a way of stopping him from using the dash attack, you still really don't want to deal with the dash attack. And the dash attack is triggered by being too close to the boss. What's that mean? Don't stay in the middle. If you stay in the middle, you're close enough to him on every single side. And not only that, but it means that if you're trying to track him, which, by the way, his dodges are now near instant, which makes them very difficult to track, you're going to be constantly flipping your camera around, trying to look around as he teleports around you. You need to pick a side of the arena, that way you can keep track of the most space as possible, and if you don't see him, it means he's probably right above you. And at that point, you need to dash and jump out of the way. Also, if you're in the middle, he can hit you with the dash attack from any angle. That's big damage. You don't want that. Now, playing into all these methods, you should be able to beat this boss without too much issue. Unless, of course, you're a melee build, in which case you've been looking at this video and been very upset because I've been using the magic the whole time and you're like, this is impossible. I can't beat it with melee and to which I would raise you, yes you can. Using a melee build to try to take on Elias is relatively similar with some hefty changes to doing damage. You're probably going to need to get a better grasp of the parry system just because sometimes when you're close up he'll start to do a move and you're going to want to block or parry because you can't avoid it. That being said, there are some things that change, especially when it comes to the arrow storm. If you're using melees and Elias goes for an arrow storm while not on a pillar, you should go over there and hit him as many times as you can. Just mash M1s over there. Now, if you're standing near him and he once again goes for an arrow storm and it's about to hit directly on top of you, don't bother avoiding it. You can if you're really worried about your health, but most of the time you're gonna get a lot more damage on him by just standing there and tanking the arrows than if you tried to avoid them and now you're trying to deal with avoiding all the other attacks. You should also take note that if you're getting attacked by the M1 attack, rather than trying to avoid it like you would with a ranged build, you should just attack back because again, every bit of damage counts. Now, the best way to get Elias to use the arrow attack while on the ground is to parry him when he does the dash attack which means unlike when you were playing with a ranged build, you're gonna wanna be close to him so that way you can trigger it. Because sometimes after doing a dash attack, he'll do that arrow storm and that's where your damage comes from. You can also try to destroy all the pillars if you have the ability to do so, so that way he's almost always on the ground, but that can be a bit tricky at times. But really, the best strategy when it comes to defeating Lord Elias is to just bring somebody else. While yes, doing a boss fight with another person increases the amount of damage that you need to deal in order to take them out, having somebody there makes a world of difference. The AI has a tendency of hard targeting one person a lot of the time, and because of that it means that the other person can just wail on the boss as much as they want. It turns what otherwise would be a hard boss fight where you need to learn a bunch of mechanics into a cakewalk where someone runs around dodging attacks and the other person just murders the boss. So yeah, if you're really struggling, just find other people. With that though, well, I mean, I suppose that's that. That's the best advice that I have for you when it comes to trying to defeat this boss. I think it's more than achievable as long as you know what you're doing and know what the boss is doing to beat this boss basically at any level. 
even if you haven't grinded at all, you can definitely achieve this. Now with that being said, I am done here. So if you enjoyed this video, you learned anything, you think it helped, then you can leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't do those things. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you next time.